Good morning everyone, this is Tactical Strategy with yet another episode of Minecraft The Art of War. This should hopefully be the most interesting video yet, uh, because in this video, instead of building stuff or talking about strategy, we're going to blow stuff up. So here's an exact repu replica, almost, of the most advanced water wall that we talked about the other day. Uh, we talked about how these are impervious to TNT cannons. You can see in here the, the gravel. There is lava behind that, I, I assure you. And now we're going to talk about what to do if your enemy has these. Uh, you're going to have to... Regular TNT cannons won't work because they'll fire right into the wall. So you're going to have to use something that's called a TNT mortar. I uh, mentioned a TNT mortar earlier, uh, how my enemies use them to destroy my town. But we've never actually done TNT mortars. And... So I'm going to build you my favorite design, which is that, which actually I designed myself. And I call it the cross mortar because the inside is shaped like a cross. Um, so unlike regular TNT cannons, mortars have, damn it, I just, I don't know what I'm doing today. Mortars have TNT mounted on the sides as well, uh, which pushes the TNT further up and hopefully over our wall. I done some testing. I did some testing before and found that three blocks, um, as this cannon is designed for, is actually too much to get it over this sort of wall. So just for this test run, we're going to use only two blocks of TNT in the main firing cavity, and then another two. Uh, in the propulsion. So now I'm just going to put a TNT right there. If you wanted to get it further, you could put it here instead. But since we want it to go up and over, I'm going to put it right here. Uh, so now let's see if this works. and away. You see that? That wall did not protect what was behind it at all. You can see this TNT cannon was able to just fire straight over the wall. You could do this however many times you wanted to completely destroy whatever was behind it. So I'm gonna try just try to see if I can actually hit the wall right now on the top. Yes, yes. All right, you see that? That would have killed any archer that was there. If we could just continue firing, if you'll let me do that for a little while. And bombs away. You can just continue doing this and just completely destroy the wall. You see, now you can just do plan B, as we've said, and crawl over, or you continue could continue bombarding it until the wall was completely destroyed. You see, this this type of TNT cannon mortar, uh, specifically the cross mortar, allows you to very accurately and very quickly destroy a water wall to allow your soldiers entrance to their base. But what if, on the other hand, you didn't need height, as we did over there, but instead you needed range? There's a special type of cannon for that. Uh, of course, you could do just a regular TNT cannon, but there's a way to get extra range using a special technique, uh, which is making a dual cord cannon, as I call it. Uh, I'm sure there's another name for that. Uh, you may know it by another name. I call it a dual cord cannon. Um, so we're just going to do the basics. I'm going to cover this up so you don't actually put TNT, accidentally put TNT in it. And so basically the way this works is TNT has a single explosion. It's uh, so, and it doesn't carry very far. So if I, this TNT set off here, it doesn't push this one much further. 
so we add the second core, which is right here, as I like to call it, uh, to make it draw cord. So would, these go off an instant before the, the regular propulsion ones. So these, these are set, and then these are set, and then these go off, pushing all of these a lot closer to that piece of TNT, uh, which means they all go off, like right around here where these two blocks are, and uh, makes, they're, so they're closer to the firing TNT, and make it go a lot further. Uh, now about repeaters, uh, I found that about nine repeaters worth of their maximum setting is about how long it takes a TNT piece to go off. Uh, so you don't want any more than that. Now stairs. Uh, I did a, I use stairs here because stairs don't carry redstone. If I if this has been just a regular block, this TNT would have gone off along with the rest of these and it would have blown the cannon up. Uh, so stairs allow me to. I could have fixed that by doing that, of course, but that reduces the uh, the power of the cannon. And uh, I'm not. It's, uh, let's try this. I'm, I think it might disappear. Did you see those go off? No. Oh yes, I was able to render it. Um, so you can see that was a that was a very low arc, but we got it pretty far. It's just about on the edge of the render distance for far. If you could have a line of these just bombarding the approaching enemy, they would have a hard time returning fire at you if they can't even see you. I don't I don't think a bow can go that far, at the very least accurately. Uh, so here we have a, uh, a cannon for sieges. Here we have a cannon mainly for defense or long-range bombardment. There is a third cannon that I want to show you that's not really a cannon. It's uh, more like an infiltration charge. Uh, and we'll see that. Here uh, we have the second wall that we showed in the previous video. Uh, just because I'm not sure how TNT works with lava. And I don't want to try that for a video, but I'm pretty sure it would work. Uh, so maybe you're outnumbered. Maybe it's the dead of night. Maybe you just want to cause some trouble without trying to actually take the city. Anyway, you need to be discreet, but you want to blow stuff up anyway. So how are you going to do this? You're going to use what I just called an infiltration charge. Uh, this is actually taken from real life. It's a, I'm not sure what it's called again. Ba basically, you're inserting TNT to the wall in a very stealth-like way. So you see, I'm just using this piston to push the TNT through the wall. And when that looks like enough, I push cobblestone in with it. Then I'm going to destroy the excess, just as good as new. Then I just drill a tiny hole and run. So, no damage to the wall, of course, because there's water. The same cannot, unfortunately, be said of the town inside. Uh, from the outside, it looks almost pristine. Uh, but there's devastating damage on the inside, even though it is a water wall. This method will allow you, These methods will allow you to inflict extreme end costs on your enemy with relatively little P costs for yourself. Uh, so I'd say this one is very good, but it's hard to uh, it's very hard to do it without being noticed. So it's best, as I said, as an infiltration cannon uh, as a stealth option. So anyway, all three of these cannons will work for different circumstances. Some of them might work uh, some of them might work for the same thing. For example, the, uh, the this little cross mortar is just one of the best cannons I've, I've ever seen. It's, it's really great. If you configure it differently, it fires up and far. Obviously not as far as the dual cord cannon, but still pretty far. So these three cannons, or explosive options if you want to call them that, are very useful in different circumstances. And 
War, war in Minecraft pretty much requires you to have at least some knowledge of TNT. Uh, thank you all for watching. Our next video will be about in-game communication that cannot be read by admins, cannot be read by hackers, and cannot be read by your enemy. I'll see you next time.